One of the things that, that strongman leaders do when they do get control of a country is they shut down independent media. They make it a crime or they make it otherwise impossible for anybody to report or say or broadcast anything that is independent of the strongman or that is critical of the strongman. And that, of course, is not how the American system of government works. With our robust First Amendment and freedom of the press protections, that's not at all how we are set up as a government and as a country. But again, what, what's on the table from Republicans in this election is scrapping our system of government and instead doing it the strongman way instead. You say no. CBS should lose its license. Why? Sure. Well, I've never seen anything like it. The head of the FCC says we would never uh, yank a license uh, really? uh, because oh. a politician didn't like his or her coverage. Well, this isn't a politician. This is nothing. Wait a minute. Now, what we're doing is we're going to subpoena their records in 60 minutes. No, I think 60 minutes, I think it should be taken off the air, frankly. This comes in the wake of that same candidate, Donald Trump, saying that ABC News should also have its broadcast license revoked. And it comes in the wake of that same candidate saying that this network, MSNBC and NBC News, should have its broadcast license revoked. And it comes on the heels of him saying that the head of Facebook should be put in prison. And it comes on the heels of him saying, just you wait. Just you wait to see what he's going to do to the New York Times. Wait until you see what I'm going to do to them. This is not normal American stuff. This isn't American at all. This is strongman, authoritarian form of government stuff, which our Constitution protects us from explicitly. I mean, what Trump is proposing to do here in America to the media is what Putin, of course, has already done in Russia. In Russia, it is state-controlled media only. And that's the case everywhere. You've got an authoritarian in charge. In Saudi Arabia, the state-controlled media there includes Al Arabiya TV. Uh, you get a handy reminder of the fact that it's state-controlled media if you watch any of their clips online. Um, Trump loves Saudi Arabia, right? <laughs> One of the many underreported things in the presidential campaign this year, I think, was that in the midst of our presidential campaign just this summer, Trump signed a deal to build Trump Tower Saudi Arabia uh, in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. That is a huge real estate deal. That is the, the Saudi government doling out a huge financial favor to Trump while he is in the middle of his presidential campaign. They are expecting, presumably, that if he does get back into the White House, that huge personal financial favor they just did him will still be fresh in his mind when it comes to making American policy, American government policy towards Saudi Arabia. The Saudi royal family, you will recall, also stuffed $2 billion, billion with a B, $2 billion into the pockets of Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, as soon as he left the White House. The New York Times recently reporting that they, the Saudis have seen precisely zero return on that supposed investment in Jared Kushner. He's just kept all the money and skimmed out over $100 million in fees for himself while returning nothing to them, at least so far. But presumably that's because they're not expecting to be paid back by him. They're expecting to be paid back by the White House, by the American people. The Saudis don't seem to be all that eager to get any of that money back from old Jared because they know they'll get it back another way from us from policy at our expense to pay back the people who have paid him. So the Trump relationship with Saudi Arabia is very well oiled. Honestly, if you wanted to create like a kindergarten level textbook, one of those like those books where the, the pages are cards, right? <laughs> Card stock. If you wanted to create a kindergarten level textbook to explain to a kindergartner what corruption is, right? This is how you might spell it out. Fail. Imagine your friend is running for president. Somebody gives your friend a huge, sweet business deal while he's running for president. And that same someone then gives your friend's family billions of dollars while he's running for president. C is for corruption. Your friend is corrupt. <laughs> right? And then if it was like a, you know, a good children's book, it would say, oh, but don't worry, this could never happen in the United States of America. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to update that textbook. Uh, but anyway, um, today, Al Arabiya, Saudi state-controlled media, posted a new interview with Donald Trump. 
And this new interview with Donald Trump, it was just published today, it got basically a zero pickup in the United States, which is kind of amazing, right? A presidential candidate interview gets zero pickup two weeks before Election Day. But I think the reason this interview didn't get any pickup might be because of the headline that Saudi state-controlled Al Arabiya slapped on the video when they posted it. Look at the headline they put on this. Quote, Trump says Middle East peace possible if elected. Oh, yes. That's what we're all expecting, right? Elect Donald Trump. What's going to happen? Well, for starters, you'll get peace in the Middle East. It's, it's evaded the geniuses of many generations, but that six-dimensional chess player will be able to sort it out. Yeah. Um, peace in, tr Trump will, will bring about peace in the Middle East if he's elected. You will be surprised to learn that that was not the actual newsworthy takeaway from that interview with Saudi state-controlled media. What is the actual newsworthy takeaway from that interview? is that in that interview, Trump just flat out said that there aren't hostages being held by Hamas. Uh, he says they're all dead. Imagine if you're the family member of one of these hostages who's been held for a year now by Hamas, and a presidential candidate in the United States comes out and says, yeah, well, they're pretty much all dead. Most of them are dead. Ah, oh, well. But that is what he said today. That is what he said. Now, still, you have hostages. But many of them have been killed, and I'm sure many of them are dead. I think even early on, I think a lot of those hostages were dead. I think they were dead. Imagine the cruelty of that, right? If you're the family of a hostage in Gaza, you've been working for a year now desperately to get your loved one out of there. Imagine you're the family of an American hostage held in Gaza, and you are counting, among other things, on the American government to do all it can to get your brother or your mother or your daughter out alive as a hostage. And here's a man running to be president of the United States saying, yeah, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure they're all dead. I'm sure they're all dead. Trump also said in his Al Arabiya Saudi state-controlled media interview today that he would have done a deal with Hamas. That if Hamas wanted to do something like October 7th, Trump would have stepped in and done a deal with them. Right? So if you, if you liked it when Trump invited the Taliban to come to Camp David, well, now here he is two weeks before the presidential election saying if he were president again, he'd make deals with Hamas. And that's how he would have solved the October 7th problem. I would have made a deal with them and they wouldn't have done October 7th. You know, Michael Dukakis's presidential campaign cratered because he put on a helmet that made his head like a, look like a little bean, made his face look short. Donald Trump pretended to work at a McDonald's this weekend while wearing this lovely ensemble. And then the next day, he said, all the hostages are dead and I want to do a deal with Hamas. But our election's 50-50. This is our election this year. Democratic candidate Vice President Kamala Harris campaigned today in Pennsylvania and in Michigan and in Wisconsin with Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who was among the highest profile cross-party endorsers and supporters of Kamala Harris. Vice President Harris was also just endorsed by Republican Susan Ford Bales. Middle name is important there. She is the daughter of former Republican President Gerald Ford and a lifelong Republican. On mainstream economic issues, which Pundit World is always telling us is the bedrock of all normal election politicking, last week we talked about The Economist magazine going large this past week with its special report on the rip-roaring economy that the Biden-Harris administration is leaving in its wake. The Economist calling it literally the envy of the world. The U.S. economy, after this four years of Biden and Harris, outpacing every other major industrialized economy in the world, blowing all economic expectations out of the water on growth, on the job market, on taming inflation, on wages, on manufacturing jobs, on household wealth for average American households. On top of that, entities like The Wall Street Journal now reporting on the fairly devastating economic expectations from Trump's policies. Economists telling the journal in overwhelming numbers that Trump's policies will be terrible for inflation, terrible for the deficit, terrible for interest rates. 
Today, you can add Social Security to that list. A new report from a nonpartisan fiscal watchdog group setting off the alarm that what Trump is proposing economically will destroy Social Security within six years. Will end Social Security within six years. By the end of the decade. So the Harris Walls campaign, you know, is doing normal things with a little more pizzazz than I'd say is usual, but, but normal campaigning, touring swing states with Republicans who are telling moderates and independents and even Republicans that they should cross over and vote not for the Republican, but for the Democratic candidate this year. They've been doing campaign events with A-list celebrities like Lizzo and Usher and Stevie Wonder, and they're doing interviews with every media outlet you have ever heard of in your life. Kamala Harris's running mate, Tim Walls, sat down with the ladies of The View today. He's doing The Daily Show on Comedy Central tonight. What's Trump doing? He's telling rally audiences about the penis size of a famous golfer, announcing how he's going to shut down American news organizations. He's canceling all of, almost all of his interviews with American news organizations. And instead, it's talking to Saudi Arabian state-controlled media, to whom he has just announced that he wants to do a deal with Hamas, while also telling American families waiting for the return of their loved ones who are being held hostages, who are being held hostage, that yeah, as far as he's concerned, all those hostages are probably dead. Don't bother.